Cats are highly intelligent. She understands food and poop. Untrue. Untrue? Untrue. <laughs> my, my nephew was beating up my big green hippo the other day. And I was like, that poor hippo. And he stops dead in the middle of wrestling it and goes, hey, Dara, he can't feel anything. He's not alive. He's a stuffed animal. I'm sorry, you just got upstaged by the cat. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> really yeah, she does that. Uh, she's good like for run you. around crazy, go nuts time. She's good. Especially she's... since I busted out string, which is gone now. Yeah, she took it with her. She's gunning for your no. job, man. I know, but she wants my job. There we go. Hi. There we go. You got your string. You're happy. <laughs> anyway. So Which we've got. I'm gonna be the most famous cat on the internet. Fuck Grumpy Cat. Ah, Fuck him right in the ear. Get out Talk of the about way. Bridget now. It's Bridget's time. So we've got a, an assortment tonight of weirdness. But that's get out of the get out of the. Oh great! Now I'm spoiling my own stories because they're on, they're on your face now and they shouldn't be. Now they're not on your face. Um, I don't want I don't want an assortment of weirdness on my face. Not for less than two hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, all right. So, are we ready for the nonsense? Let's do the nonsense. Okay. Come on, where are you? Title intro. Come along, intro. Radio cat hair. <laughs> Dude, we went from radio dead air to radio red hair to radio cat hair. You should have seen it. I helped Allison move last week, and by the time we were done, we had enough fur to make another cat. Yeah, they do that. The shedding. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week. We are going to begin with probably the weirdest crime. Well, no, the crime itself isn't weird, I think. It's the fact that there needed to be a terminology for said crime, and it's the terminology that, that jumps out at me. We're just um, your butt. You're on the internet. <laughs> actually, that, that's a way, good way to make money on the internet. It's so rude. Um... Well, there's an issue with Skype. When, you're, when your when your connection speed improves, your your screen resizes itself. Oh. Hey, so uh, yeah, this this first crime is one that I wish did not require a uh, uh, a terminology, and yet it does. Oh no! Serial pooper could be back. Dun 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 da. Harris County Constables have confirmed they have received reports that a serial pooper who was caught defecating in people's backyards is up to his old tricks again. Constables at Precinct 1 say they received a call from someone earlier today saying they have a photo of the man who they saw uh, and, and that they saw him walking around with toilet paper. It's a good chance it could be the same guy. It's on the same street where this was happening before. Well, at least he brings his own toilet paper. Did I you leave that in the yard too. I I just he's prepared for this shit. Is the thing, literally, literally, literally. Yeah. I, as I says, the words came out of my mouth. Literally, he is. Why do you do this? I don't know. Is it like a, this is like a fetish or something? I was gonna say probably. Like, does he poop in your yard and then scooge in your yard? Also, just the, the little happy image there is disturbing me. The image didn't load on mine. Well, it's this little happy. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, a little happy poop. Take the poo to the loo. We can make a dance. Take the poo to the loo. It, it, Take the poo to the loo. This, this is a man who literally wakes up Mentally prepares himself physically. He has like a pooping kit. He's got the, the, the toilet paper in a bag, puts it over his shoulder, goes out and like tonight, 
Somebody's getting fertilized the hard way. Maybe it's a homeless person? No! There's nowhere else to go? Well, even then, you know, in someone's backyard and in different people's backyards. Although, you know, if it was all the same guy's backyard, I think... That's just vindictive. That's vindictive. He's like spreading it out. Serial pooper. That's a term that had to happen. That's the society we live in right now. The term serial pooper had to come into existence. And depending on what they're eating for breakfast, that could be a double meaning. Puns are not good things, Tara. They're, they're just Puns are excellent things. They're like not. Kitties. They're not good things. <sighs> Thank you for no longer licking your butt. So we often have these stories about people who, who repeat are repeat offenders. They keep doing the same shit over and over and over again. Like serial poopers like who serial. are literally doing the same shit <laughs> over and over again. That was a backwards segue. I haven't done one of those before. <sighs> this one is from a guy who did the same thing over and over again in rapid goddamn succession. Man arrested 14 nights in a row. Police arrested a man for the 14th time in two weeks last night as he attempted to steal from a store in central Reykjavik. The man, who was in his 40s, had been bungling shop burglaries every night for a fortnight. If that wasn't enough, he's also caught stealing food from hotel restaurants. Additionally, the thief is accused of being rude to employees of the shops and hotels he stole or attempted to steal from. 14 nights, like, that's a by the third or fourth attempted robbery, don't you just give up and get a job? I know, because this is not that th this is this is the this is life's way of saying you were not meant for this. No, yeah, a life of crime, not in the cards for you, buddy. Yeah, this is Sorry. not your calling. This this is not what you should do. I don't know what you, you should you do. You are not Danny Ocean. You are not Bonnie and Clyde. 14 arrests. Do you think the guys at the station were just like, oh, Bob's back. 14 and four, was he going for some kind of record? You Is should, there a Guinness record for that? Possibly. Because there should be. Po police booking, it shouldn't be you walk in and they go, Norm! That's not what you want to happen. No, that's not where you want everybody to know your name. <laughs> Because they're not always glad you came. They really no. are. And they don't have beer. They don't. They they probably have. Th I make wine in the turlet. And here's the thing. Like, is this a place without a no a three strike rule? Like, how do you arrest somebody 14 times in 14 nights and not just keep them there one night? Pocky in the channel on the 15th. He gets to keep the orange jumpsuit. Like. <laughs> At some point, don't just be like, you know what? You're just you're just going to stay here. Yeah, just, you know, just, you know, cut out the middleman and just don't leave. Right. Be like, you're free to go. No, it's an effort. Yeah, you know, because. Are I are they, is this is guy like trying to give cops something to do, because if, if that's the case, I promise you, they've got plenty of other shit to be taken care of. I mean, it is Iceland. How exciting is Iceland? It's a point. It's crime wise. It's like it, you never hear about a lot of crime in Iceland. It's too cold. I don't think the cold has anything to do with it. I think just maybe Iceland's boring. I don't know about boring, but you know. You seem like a pretty peaceful, if quirky people. You know, you got Bjork, you got of Monsters and Madness from Iceland, I think. You know, yeah, I, I, Bjork's not helping their they case. No, they have no trees. I learned that from Twin Peaks, that the entire country is above the tree line. When, when one of your most notable uh, res residents of a country is Bjork, you're not helping your case for anything. Anything. Yeah, but, oh, I'm saying, like, Bjork's not like a super criminal. She's quite She could be. She could be. But, you know, she didn't hurt anybody. She's hurt plenty. 
She's hurt me plenty. Oh God! I'm just saying things maybe I can't the police unsee. Police in Iceland are pretty bored, and maybe this guy is just doing him a solid. <laughs> Unlike the first guy we had this week, who is literally doing him a solid. Well, we don't know that for sure. <sighs> So we've had this has happened before. We've had drunk driving stories where someone where the, the person pulled over has claimed someone else was driving. Including people who weren't actually in the car, which was kind of impressive. But I think this one really is probably the most impressive in this series that keeps happening. Man disputes DUI. Claims dog was driving. Who is driving? Dog is driving. How can this be? Georgia man, and this guy's an asshole to top it off. Listen to this shit. Georgia man arrested on charges of driving under the influence offered an unusual alibi to officers. He said his dog was driving. The Oconee County Sheriff, yeah, you got to that part. The Oconee County Sheriff's Office responded to a call about a dog locked in a car in a store parking lot. When officers arrived, they spotted the dog along with a can of gasoline in the car, the outside temperature was 99 degrees, and the temperature inside the car registered 123 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't do this to your dog. The dog was freed from the vehicle. Animal control took custody of the dog. When officers located the driver, Wesley Mark Terrell, 60, he appeared to be highly intoxicated, according to authorities. Terrell explained to officers that his dog drove him to the store to buy corn. Obviously. Do you remember those skits they used to do on Saturday Night Live? Toots is the driving cat. The driving cat. The cat who could drive a car. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. always ended the same way. Yeah, that was a puppet. This is a dog. This is a real dog. I'm already pissed about leaving an animal in a car. The 123 no, don't degrees. Don't do that. That makes you a really bad person. But on top of that, to actually... Attempt to say, no, the dog drove me because, you know, drove me here to buy corn because I was I was wrong. Did the dog demand corn or did the human say, yo, Fido, I need corn. But the thing is, I'm drunk. Oh, that's okay, master. We wouldn't want you to be, you know, irresponsible. Let me drive you. I haven't had a drink in hours. I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Man's best friend. I got you. The dog's doing... Okay, uh, computer Ronan. DWI. Dog with idiot. Yeah. Don't let the cat drive me places. (laughs) I bet Bridget's an excellent driver. I mean, she has trouble braking just running across the house and she kind of slides in the walls, but I'm sure she'd do better in a car. (laughs) Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy says, what is it, Lassie? Timmy fell down the well? I got the, I get the beer with money for coin and you start up my vehicle. Well, at least he didn't claim the dog was drunk and driving. I just, geez. But seriously, don't leave your dog in the car. Don't leave your child in the car. Don't leave, your, don't leave any living thing in the fucking car in the summer. Don't do it in the winter either, because you're probably not leaving it here. Just don't leave living things unattended in your car. Video is, video is video says, you can blame the dog for farting, not DUI. There are things you can blame on the dog. Dog ate my homework. What's that smell? That was the dog. Not driving. Sparky cannot reach the fucking pedals. Well, it depends on the dog. Some can. Well, even if he can, have you? Okay, have you seen a dog try to walk on his hind legs? It's not yeah. a pretty sight. And they don't have thumbs. They don't have thumbs. So, you know, obviously he's a shitty driver because he can't signal a turn. Or hold the wheel, really. Yeah, you know. Kinda, you can't really drive like that. No. Well, actually, you can. I drive with my knees sometimes, though I really shouldn't. It freaks people out. Why do men do that? Because <laughs> you know, so many men that do that. I've seen men driving with their knees texting. Now I don't do that. It's like, well, I need to shift this stuff around in my oh, hands. What planet is that safe? Driving with your knees and texting. Well, it's okay because I no, your knees don't have thumbs either. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> your knees don't have thumbs either. Either and if your they dick doesn't count as a thumb. 
If 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 your dick is prehensile, you should be on TV. Is all I'm saying. Why do men do that? Men I don't, don't do that. I don't know. It just it see it. I don't know why I do what I do. Don't do that. <sighs> okay. Do you have a really big car too? You have a truck. I got a truck. Yeah. That's. Don't do that. Tara doesn't like me. I can't run this show by myself. <laughs> so we won't be here to make fun of you. Okay. You pieces yourself off a cliff. Okay, okay. Yeah, fair, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And she spotted a bug. Oh, um, she's found a bug. Now we're staring intently at the window because there's a bug. So I, uh, I just got back from Canada, which means I had to have fun with the TSA yet again at uh, beautiful Chicago, Chicago, Chicago's Midway Airport. Which is that tough for coming from Canada? They give you a lot of shit going in. It's like there's there's like going into Midway Airport is stunning because there's there's like this choke point and all these lines next to each other to get to the it's it's astonishing oh. how busy this fucking airport is. So that was all kinds of fun, but uh, I did not get someone this dumb this occasion. But the fact that this person exists makes me scared. These are the people we're hiring to protect us from terrorists. These are the people in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. Reporter stopped by TSA agent who didn't know District of Columbia is in the U.S. And where is it? Where is it? It's fucking Florida. Something most students learn in elementary school, the United States, made up of 50 states and the District of Columbia. But Channel 9's Justin Gray found out it's a lesson that an Orlando agent of the Transportation Security Safety Administration seems to have missed. Gray, who lives in Washington, D.C., was flying out of Orlando International Airport when a TSA agent said Gray's District of Columbia's driver's license wasn't a valid form of identification. Gray said his license is legal and up to date, but the TSA agent didn't seem to know what the District of Columbia was when Gray arrived at the security check board of the weekend. When Gray handed the man his driver's license, the agent demanded to see Gray's passport. Gray told the agent he wasn't carrying the passport and asked why he needed it. The agent said he didn't recognize the license. Gray said he asked the agent if he knew what the District of Columbia is, and after a brief conversation, Gray realized the man did not know. That's really scary. Okay. This person gets to vote. They get to determine who may or may not be a terrorist. Yes. This is someone who is authorized to play with your testicles by law. Well, all right, let's be honest. There's a lot of people that are authorized to play with your testicles that you wouldn't ask for political advice. True, but this is someone who is... There are people you pay to play with your testicles that you wouldn't ask for political or geographical advice. I don't really think that's the defining factor here. This is someone... But they can decide who counts as a terrorist. This is someone... They can detain you. Yeah. Yeah, this is someone who, you know, having a little knowledge of geography, at least enough to know what is part of the United States... And what is not part of the United States would seem to be a job prerequisite. You'd like to think. If you were working retail, if you were working in many other kinds, if you were in, in food service, if you were in many other kinds of jobs, I could understand not having a knowledge of geography as a prerequisite. Fine. But this is about finding the bombs and shit. Shouldn't you have someone who has opened a book once in the goddamn and life? Knowing the difference between a domestic and international flight. You don't need a passport to go from New York to Florida. Although you probably should. Because <laughs> it's an entirely different world down there. It's a whole other planet. You actually need NASA certification. I'm not going to Disney World. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, fuck, I'm not even sure it's an, it's the same plant. Yeah, it's it. I'm not entirely sure they're the same species at this point. <sighs> Where did Cro Magnon go? We have a theory. Florida. We need to play Derek's Florida song sometime again. Yeah, we do. 
especially considering he wrote it to the to the tune of O Canada. So topical. So we, a few uh, weeks back, or we had, I think maybe even last week, we had a, no, it was a few weeks back. We had a story with a woman who discovered a spider in her house and started a fire in order to stop said spider. This guy apparently went, decided just starting a fire wasn't enough. He wanted to burn the whole fucker down. Man. Man tries to kill. Man tries to kill spider, sets house on fire instead. Saddle House was set on fire Tuesday night by a man trying to kill a spider with a makeshift blowtorch. Those are two words that should never, ever be next to one another. Ever. Makeshift and blowtorch do not go together. Here's what I think is the more pressing question. Do shoes not work anymore? I ex- Are there suddenly like Terminator spiders out there with adamantium exoskeletons of which I am unaware that can no longer be killed with your shoe or rolled up magazine or oh a hippo <laughs> pen or a bottle of nail polish or any other bunk object you happen to have at the ready? Like- Th- follow me in the channel. Mac wants the flamethrower. Mac wants the what? Are these the spiders from Lost in Space? <laughs> have those come to Earth? Is Gary Oldman okay? It gets worse. The very next paragraph. The man who rented the house. Oh my god. Was trying to kill a spider in the laundry room with a can of spray paint and a lighter. Flames quickly spread through the room and into the attic. You're hitting me with all the autoplay shit today. Renting means you don't get to do whatever the fuck you want. I have rules about the house I'm in right now because I rent. Mm-hmm. That means I can't drill tons of holes in the fucking walls without permission. If I want to change certain things, I need to let them know. You know, it, 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 there are rules about can't this shit. Burn the place down. Right. I am not allowed to burn my house down because I do not own it. Like, are we talking with this fucking she lob? <laughs> Because that I could kind of understand. I would I would burn my house down if I encountered Shelob as well. It does not. Fuck. It does not. It, fire. it does not anywhere in the article indicate if the guy doing this was in fact a hobbit. But unless you're dealing with Shelob or the adamantium spiders from Lost in Space, which, if you recall, they actually referred to as adamantium exoskeletons. So that's like Marvel canon, weirdly. Unless it's those things, probably a shoe. It's going to work. Will Jr. in the channel goes, uh, shut up, Mikey. Shut up. Don't you give no matches to Mikey. Don't you give no matches to Mikey. I don't care what Mikey say or what Mikey do. Don't you give no matches to Mikey. You don't watch MS33K. I forget. Tara, I remember we did that whole podcast that was all about MST3K. Yeah. And we got on and they asked me my favorite episode. And I was like, actually, I've never watched in this T3K. We're flying. No, no, we're flying you out here one weekend. And it was a little humiliating for everybody because I had no business being on this podcast. We're flying you out here one weekend. We're sitting you down and we're just putting you in front of the TV for a whole weekend and fixing shit. These are things you need to know. They're important to our culture and society as geeks. You have to know your history. You have to know where you come from. Whatever. I can recite incredibly obscure details about Lost and the X-Files and Twin Peaks that none of y'all bitches know. And that's good. That's in, that's good. I knew that the spiders in Lost in Space had an adamantium exoskeleton. Did you remember that? Because I remember that. I remember Mimi Roger saying it. I remember everybody being like, holy shit, is Lost in Space Marvel canon now? Did you remember that? I don't think you did. Yeah, and you got the degree. I'm just talking. We need to get you in a graduate program now. Is all I'm saying. Is all I'm saying. 
We need to get a couple of letters after your name for the PH for, for the geek shit, you know? All right, our last one, how we can top a guy burning the fucking house down with a spider is one that makes everybody, I don't care who you are. We have, this is this is a douche quake if ever there was one. This is Somebody an, just texted me to heckle me that I don't watch MST3K. I have a text on my phone. It's Mike, isn't it? No. Really? No. Wow. No. Mike would just heckle me in the chat. Well, that's true. Yeah. Mike doesn't have my phone number. <laughs> That is a smart plan. That is a good plan. Mike doesn't even have my address anymore because I moved. My producer should. Uh, th- those are things my producer does not need to know for anyone. Don't give well, Mike. He used to just send me random hippos. He's the one who sent me my, my hippo pimp ring. No, no matter what Mikey say or what Mikey do, don't you give Mikey your address. I'll send you a gimp suit. <laughs> that was 50% my fault, though. That wasn't all him. I totally had a hand in that. So our last story, this is this is express lane to hell shit right here. Um, I am baffled and angry and disturbed on many levels. Let you see the headline and you'll find out why. Holy fuck this lady. And, and I will point out the child only minorly was injured. But it's still, it's not so much about the kid, it's about this fucking lady. Woman threatens two-year-old with, quote, slow, painful death. (gasps) Middle-aged woman barged a two-year-old, that means bumped into, or, well, hit, with a Zimmer frame. Look at you with all your English slang knowing. Before making death threats in the middle of a town center supermarket. Now, I'm going to point out, he, he got a bru- the kid got a bruise and a scratch, which that's that's thank God that's as bad as it got. Um, when the store manager asked her to leave the premises, the wit- she, quote, attacked him. And with her with her walking aid, Samantha Dyke from Hayward Heath was shopping with her son through Daniels when the incident took place in Iceland on South Road. She said, quote, my two year old son got hit by a lady pushing a Zimmer frame for no reason. She refused to apologize. She went on to say she is going to make sure my son dies a slow, painful death. That's just uncalled for. Samantha said she then made her way to the checkout where she was the next next to the lady in the queue. I asked her to apologize. She refused and said, quote, that didn't hurt. She looked at me and said, I'm going to make sure he dies a slow, painful death. I said, excuse me, and she said it again. Manager asked her to leave and banned her. She threw money at the checkout lady and attacked the, ma- the manager with her Zimmer frame. And then she tried What's to... What's a Zimmer frame? I, Is it like a walker? Yeah, I think it's like a walker. It's like a, a, stro- a walker. Samantha claims the woman used the Zimmer frame, quote, as a weapon. Manager tried to call the police. She smashed their phone. This is an angry old lady. I will tell you, when I used to work at Old Navy, you wouldn't believe how many people use their stroller with their child in it as a battering ram. What the fuck is wrong with this? Motherfucker! She is angry. She is angry. She needs a kitty, and she wouldn't be so angry. My father, when his emphysema got bad, he had to use a walker, too. I those things are heavy as shit. They're they're relatively lightweight. But you get one going and you swing it. Those things are solid aluminum. Well, so- those things are aluminum. They've got some heft to them. Like, granted, I've threatened a two-year-old because I have nieces and nephews, but I've threatened them with things like socks and underwear every Christmas for life. Right. Not with a slow and painful death. You know, never, never hit him with that one. Hell, the kid probably looked at his mom and went, Ma, what's a slow and painful death? Mommy, what's death? <laughs> yeah, mommy, what's death? Well, so, well, son, it's what that lady's going to be experiencing fairly soon. It's like you assaulted a child, then you threaten that child. You express no remorse for any of these actions. I just like I'm imagining like, you know, uh, uh, in hell, there's there's like a secretary's desk and there's a room with a big red phone and it rings and she picks it up and she goes, we got one. 
The stool softeners aren't working. You need something stronger. Yeah, I feel bad for the kid, too, because that that. The kid, luckily, probably won't remember. Thank God. I'm glad he's OK. Still, yeah. you, you, that could have been a fuckload worse. You don't do that to a child. I am not a big fan of kids in general. I don't have I, I've got very bad patience. I'm a grumpy person. I have my faults. You do but even even I, if, if I'm presented with a child that is in any way inconveniencing or annoying me, the worst I will do is. Uh, uh, you, you don't. I won't. You don't battering ram children for any reason ever. I've told this story before. I've had for, I had a friend of mine with a child once. I was hanging out at their house. And as we're talking. This child, about two or three years old runs up to me full speed full tilt this raise clocks me in the dick and then proceeds to triumphantly state to all and sundry that he is batman clearly your dick was the joker and you know what i did to him nothing because it's not my kid Okay, well, for, what I did was I avoided falling on him when I fell to the ground in pain. And even you that. Something like, hey, don't do that again, please. Yes. I am. I, it wasn't my child. And even even in public with the kids, you know, some parents just don't care. They bring their kids in and they let them loose like a like a yeah. horde. It's like, you know, I, there's this one video game called Overlord where part of the game was you could spawn this horde of little tiny goblin minions and they go off and destroy things for you. That's what I think like, of. Every, like the little things from that fell off of Cloverfield? Kind of, yeah, yeah. That's what I think of every time I see like uh, someone come into a store with like a horde, like the, their kids and just let them run around and smash shit and be like, ah! but even then. Not my kid. There were rules. There were very solid rules. You do not discipline anyone else's child, and you sure the fuck don't hit him. I won't even, like, I live with my nine-year-old nephew, and I won't discipline him. I'll be like, hey, your mom said go brush your teeth. You should brush your teeth. But, like, I don't yell at him. I don't send him to his room. Like, I'll be like, hey, listen, you should probably not put that fork in the socket. Thanks. Give me that. Okay? You know, but, like... Let's not do that. Let's, you know, just... Not, you don't know, just start hitting them. With th that is the worst grandma ever. <sighs> I just. Grumpy old lady. That, I, I, guess, I guess the first thing we learn tonight, and it shouldn't be something you need to learn. The first thing we learn tonight is that if it isn't your kid, you don't get to do things to mm -hmm. it. And oh, sometimes even when kid. it is your kid, yeah. If it is your kid, you don't get to battering ram them. No. You don't get to battering ram a toddler ever for any reason, unless it's a zombie. Fuck's sakes, just, you know what? And, I mean, if it's a zombie toddler and it's gnawing on your leg, you're probably okay to hit it with something. If you but, wait long enough, the kid's going to do some shit to himself anyway. But unless that child is a bona fide card-carrying member of the undead. No. You're not allowed. Absolutely. Not. Yeah, because yeah, it's like that one in in uh, in Pet Cemetery. The one that came back. Yeah, that one. That one you can fuck up, but unless no, you can't. So we learned this week that renter's insurance does not cover arson. At least not when it's you committing it. No. Oh. <laughs> She's upstaging the fuck out of you tonight. It's like, my turn, I'm on a show! <laughs> I'm the star now, bitch! She, she'll she climb the chair a lot, but she she doesn't stop at the chair and she just digs her claws in right here. I have all little puncture wounds. All in there. <laughs> From the cat, just, and I'm like, okay, ow, that hurts. Maybe not, thanks. We've learned that the TSA can touch your fun places, but they don't know where all they don't know geography. They don't know what's in this country. Yeah. 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 You know, the only thing that make that story worse if they were Ronald Reagan. 
<laughs> if they were in DC, I'm like fucking Dulles. This is in America. God damn it, Bridget. <laughs> She's having a party now. Yeah. She's like, I'm on the internet. I'm a cat. You fucking love me. We've learned your. <laughs> Learned your dog can do quite a many amazing things, but one of them is not driving you to the store. No, 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 no. That it's not gonna, and it's not a, that the cops aren't gonna buy it. I, they just, they aren't. <laughs> it's a little cardboard box, and I think she actually just flipped it over. <laughs> She's she's like having her offered her own little epic adventure right now. She's having a great old time. This is why she hangs out in my room, because if she was in any other room in the house, she'd be kicked out of that room right now for behaving like this. We've learned that. <laughs> We've learned that there are many Guinness records you should go for, but most times arrested in two weeks probably isn't one of them. Mm -mm. Isn't that right, Bridget? Bridget would go for that record. She's a very bad kitty. And finally, we've learned that we are such a society that the term serial pooper had to exist. That has to be a thing. Why did that have to be a thing? Shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> Although, there's your easy Halloween costume. You know how you'd always have one guy at the party with like a box of lucky charms with a knife through it with the cheap and easy costume? Here's your cheap and easy costume now. Just hooping that Lucky Charms box and carrying it around. <laughs> Maybe it should be a Cocoa Puffs box. Oh, oh God, Tara. 